post hysterectomy, vaginal vault prolapse. Green Top Guideline number 46, Royal College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists, British Society of Urogynecology Joint Guideline, July 2015. Diagnosis and Investigation What is the preferred classification for vault or pelvic organ prolapse? Standardized classification systems should be used for the assessment and documentation of pelvic organ prolapse or POP, including vault prolapse. When is urodynamic testing required? Routine urodynamic assessment is not recommended in women with PHVP or post-hysterectomy vaginal vault prolapse. In what setting should a patient with PHVP be assessed? Clinicians should work as part of a pelvic floor multidisciplinary team or MDT. Are quality of life or QOL measures of value? Patient assessment should address quality of life issues using standardized tools. Prevention. What preventive techniques are of value at hysterectomy? McCall culdoplasty at the time of vaginal hysterectomy is effective in preventing subsequent post-hysterectomy vaginal vault prolapse. Suturing the cardinal and uterosacral ligaments to the vaginal cuff at the time of hysterectomy is effective in preventing PHVP following both abdominal and vaginal hysterectomies. Sacrospinous fixation or SSF at the time of vaginal hysterectomy should be considered when the vault descends to the introitus during closure. Thus, subtotal hysterectomy have a place in the prevention of post-hysterectomy vaginal vault prolapse. Subtotal hysterectomy is not recommended for the prevention of PHVP. Are there preferred suture materials for vault support at the time of hysterectomy? There is inadequate and conflicting evidence over the use of permanent sutures in the short term and no evidence of benefit in the long term. They can be associated with high suture exposure rates. Conservative management. Is pelvic floor therapy of value in the management of post-hysterectomy vaginal vault prolapse or PHVP? Pelvic floor muscle training or PFMT is an effective treatment option for women with stage 1 to stage 2 vaginal prolapse, including PHVP. What is the place of vaginal devices? Vaginal pessaries are an alternative treatment option for women with stage 2 to stage 4 post-hysterectomy vaginal vault prolapse or PHVP. Consideration needs to be given to sexual function regular pessary changes and possible complications such as ulceration, vaginal bleeding, and a small risk of fistula formation. Surgical management. What are the indications for surgery? Surgical treatment should be offered to women with symptomatic PHVP after appropriate counseling. The decision to offer surgical treatment for PHVP should primarily be determined by the woman's symptoms, her response to conservative treatment, the impact of PHVP on her quality of life and daily activities, and also on her fitness for surgery. The planned procedure should be fully discussed, including success rates, recurrence, potential complications, and the impact of treatment and potential complications on women's quality of life and sexual function. Who should undertake surgery? Post-hysterectomy vaginal vault prolapse surgery should be performed by an RCOG accredited subspecialist urogynecologist or gynecologist who can demonstrate an equivalent level of training or experience. What is an acceptable successful result after surgical treatment? Patient reported outcomes, including patient reported success rates, and relief of presenting symptoms should be the primary assessment outcomes. Objective cure is important as it correlates to symptoms of vaginal bulge, 
a pelvic organ prolapse quantification stage of 1 or 0 in the apical compartment seems to be acceptable and widely used as the optimum post-operative result. The primary aims of surgical treatment are the restoration of normal vaginal anatomy, improvement in vaginal bulge symptoms, and the restoration or maintenance of normal bladder, bowel, and sexual function. What surgical procedures are available for the treatment of post-hysterectomy vaginal vault prolapse? The type of operation performed should be tailored to the individual patient's circumstances. The type of operation performed should be tailored to the individual patient's circumstances, such as the concomitant prolapse in other compartment or compartments, sexual activity, previous abdominal surgery, previous prolapse surgery, the total vaginal length, and associated comorbidities. An abdominal approach would be more appropriate in women with short vaginal length and those undergoing concomitant abdominal surgery. An elderly, sexually inactive woman or a woman unfit for a long surgical operation would be a candidate for colpoclysis. A comparison of surgical procedures, open abdominal sacrocolpopexy or ASC, versus vaginal sacrospinous fixation or SSF. Abdominal sacrocolpopexy or ASC involves apical suspension of the vault with a permanent mesh fixed to the longitudinal ligament of the sacrum. Typically, the mesh is attached to the anterior and posterior aspects of the vault with possible mesh extension to correct prolapse in other compartments. A systematic review of observational studies reported long-term success rates of 78 to 100 percent. Mesh erosion was observed in 2 to 11 percent. Serious complications such as bowel injury, sacral myelitis, and severe bleeding have an estimated incidence of 2%, range 0 to 8%. Sacrospinous fixation or SSF involves unilateral anchoring of the vaginal vault to the sacrospinous ligament, usually the right side, using either absorbable or non-absorbable sutures and can be done bilaterally. Several systematic reviews have shown that SSF is a highly effective therapy for vault prolapse with low recurrence and complication rates and good patient satisfaction. One concern is the high incidence, 8 to 30 percent, of post-operative anterior compartment prolapse and stress urinary incontinence, presumably due to posterior fixation of the upper vagina, which predisposes the anterior compartment to excess intra-abdominal pressure. Post-operative buttock pain has an estimated incidence of 18%, although this usually resolves within 2-3 to three months and rarely requires any additional treatment apart from analgesics and anti-inflammatory agents. Women should be aware that both ASC and SSF are effective treatments for primary post-hysterectomy vaginal vault prolapse. ASC is associated with significantly lower rates of recurrent vault prolapse, dyspareunia, and post-operative stress urinary incontinence, or SUI, when compared with SSF. However, this is not reflected in significantly lower re-operation rates or higher patient satisfaction. Sacrospinous fixation, or SSF, is associated with earlier recovery compared with abdominal sacrocolpopexy, or ASC. SSF may not be appropriate in women with short vaginal length and should be carefully considered in women with pre-existing dyspareunia. Laparoscopic and robotic sacrocolpopexy, or LSC and RSC. LSC can be equally effective as ASC 
In selected women with primary post-hysterectomy vaginal vault prolapse, LSC can include a mesh extension or be combined with other vaginal procedures to correct other compartment prolapse. There is limited evidence on the effectiveness of RSC, therefore, it should only be performed in the context of research or prospective audit following local governance procedures. High uterosacral ligament suspension or HUSLS. HUSLS can be done vaginally, abdominally, or laparoscopically and involves bilateral suspension of the vaginal vault using sutures to the uterosacral ligaments near the level of the ischial spine. Complications of HUSLS include ureteric injury, the incidence of which can be as high as 10.9%, lather injury, urinary tract infection, blood transfusion, and small bowel injury. Placing the sutures into the deep dorsal aspect of the ligament is reported to reduce the incidence of ureteric injury, especially in the laparoscopic approach. Suture erosion was noted with permanent sutures. A similar risk has been reported with laparoscopic HUSLS. High uterosacral ligament suspension or HUSLS should only be offered as first-line management in women with post-hysterectomy vaginal vault prolapse within the context of research or prospective audit following local governance procedures. Clinicians should be aware of the risk of ureteric injury, especially in the laparoscopic approach. Under what circumstances would transvaginal mesh or TVM kits and grafts be considered? The limited evidence on transvaginal mesh kits does not support their use as a first-line treatment of post-hysterectomy vaginal vault prolapse. Transvaginal mesh has mesh arms that bilaterally anchor the vaginal vault to both sacrospinous ligaments, achieving level 1 support. These were originally delivered with trocars through anatomical landmarks via the obturator membrane and or ischiorectal fossa. However, more recently, they have been anchored through single vaginal incisions. If TVM is considered, women should be fully informed of the permanent nature of the mesh and potential mesh complications, some of which are serious and have long-term effects that can be difficult to treat. If TVM is considered, women should be fully informed of alternative surgical and non-surgical options and referral to other surgeons or units arranged as appropriate. TVM should only be performed by an appropriately trained urogynecologist after discussion of each individual case in a multidisciplinary team meeting. The results of all surgical procedures involving MESH should be prospectively audited and submitted to a national surgical database for example, British Society of Urogynecology, or BSUG, and any mesh complications reported to the Medicines and Healthcare Products Regulatory Agency, or MHRA. When should colpoclysis be used? Colpoclysis entails closure of the vagina. Different techniques have been described, including vaginectomy, purse string closure, Colpoclysis after performing standard anterior and posterior vaginal wall repair, purse string closure of enterocele followed by approximation of perivesical and rectovaginal fascia, and high levator plication and Lefort colpoclysis, where a bridge of tissue is created between the anterior and posterior vaginal wall to stop the vault prolapse from protruding. Colpoclysis has a short operating time and a low incidence of complications. Colpoclysis is a safe and effective procedure that can be considered for frail women and or women who do not wish to retain sexual function. The procedure can also be performed under local anesthesia, which suits frail women who may be difficult to anesthetize.
Is there an indication for concomitant surgery for occult stress urinary incontinence? Colposuspension performed at the time of sacrocolpopexy is an effective measure to reduce post-operative symptomatic SUI or stress urinary incontinence in previously continent women. Is there an indication for concomitant surgery for post-hysterectomy vaginal vault prolapse and avert stress urinary incontinence or SUI? Colposuspension at the time of ASC does not appear to be effective treatment for stress urinary incontinence or SUI. Concomitant mid-urethral sling surgery may be considered when vaginal surgical approaches are used for the treatment of PHVP or post-hysterectomy vaginal vault prolapse. What is the optimal treatment of recurrent vault prolapse? The management of recurrent vault prolapse should be through a specialist multidisciplinary team with experience and training in this field. Clinical Governance National databases such as the British Society of Urogynecology Surgical Database should be used to document surgical outcomes and complications. The International Urogynecological Association or IUGA International Continent Society or ICS terminology and classification of complications should be used for the documentation of graft-related complications. All complications related to the use of devices and mesh should be reported to the Medicines and Healthcare Products Regulatory Agency or MHRA. Appendix number 1. The Pelvic Organ Prolapse Quantification or POPQ exam reference guide. The Pelvic Organ Prolapse Quantification or POPQ exam is used to quantify, describe, and stage pelvic support. There are six points measured at the vagina with respect to the hymen. Points above the hymen are negative numbers. Points below the hymen are positive numbers. All measurements except TVL are measured at maximum valsalva. Point AA is the anterior vaginal wall 3 cm proximal to the hymen with a range of values of minus 3 cm to plus 3 cm. Point BA is the most distal position of the remaining upper anterior vaginal wall with a range of values of minus 3 cm to plus total vaginal length or TVL. Point C, the most distal edge of cervix or vaginal cuff scar. Point D, posterior fornix, not applicable if post hysterectomy. Point AP is the posterior vaginal wall 3 cm proximal to the hymen, equivalent to minus 3 cm to plus 3 cm. Point BP, the most distal position of the remaining upper posterior vaginal wall, equivalent to minus 3 cm to plus TVL or total vaginal length. Genital hiatus or GH is measured from middle of external urethral metus to posterior midline hymen. Perineal body or PB is measured from posterior margin of genital hiatus to middle of anal opening. Total vaginal length or TVL is a depth of vagina when point D or C is reduced to normal position. Pop Q staging criteria. Point AA, AP, BA, and BP is equals to minus 3 centimeters and C or D less than or equal to minus total vaginal length minus 2 centimeters. Stage 1, stage 0 criteria not met and leading edge less than minus 1 centimeter. Stage 2, leading edge greater than or equal to minus 1 but less than or equal to plus 1 centimeter. Stage 3, leading edge greater than plus 1 centimeter but less than plus total vaginal length 
minus 2 centimeters. And stage 4, leading edge greater than or equal to plus TVL minus 2 centimeters.